He is a pivotal figure in college basketball. Our sport is a beautiful sport. It's all based on connection. I want to be great every time we go out. Duke University's legendary basketball coach, Mike Krzyzewski, has built his program into a masterpiece. National Championship after Final Four, after National Championship. I think the million dollar question is why is Coach K a special coach? Probably as good as anybody that's ever coached. Here, here, right here, come on. But every year he faces an acid test that defines his season. A showdown with Duke's arch rival and basketball power, North Carolina. When you see those jerseys, man, and you see the name on the front of that jersey, Duke in North Carolina, that means pride, that means enthusiasm and energy. And this season, with one of the youngest starting fives he's ever coached, Mike Krzyzewski faces challenges unparalleled in his coaching career. As always, he will rely on a blueprint for success that transcends sports and teaches lasting truths about the competitive spirit. It's beyond the team. It's beyond the season and you have to be incredibly competitive throughout. As he guides his team to a day of reckoning with North Carolina, Mike Krzyzewski employs his formula for success on a team that needs a victory at a crucial point in their season. Will his magic work in a must-win situation? An inside look at what a master of motivation does as the biggest rivalry in college basketball takes center stage. Next on Head to Head. Let's get down over here now. Let's go three on three, and we'll do contestant interchange. Three white on D, three blue on offense. Behind closed doors, Hall of Fame coach Mike Krzyzewski is getting his team ready for a new basketball season. Like, let's play without foul. Here we go. Expectations will be high, as they always are for a Duke University basketball team. For Krzyzewski, known simply as Coach K, has won three national championships, over 500 victories, and has been named Coach of the Year 11 times. But every year he starts over. Right, let's go five on five now. Okay, five on five. And the path to success begins in practice. It's here that a great coach makes individuals into a team. Well, we really try to teach an offensive system, a defensive system and then a, a communication system. And the, the last one is the most important because if, if you can talk well, your offense and defense both do better. This is a huge part of our defense, okay? You guys helping each other. You're talking to one another. There's like a brotherhood here. Mike Krzyzewski is so respected for his theories on success that he is invited to advise CEOs of major corporations but he'd rather get his message across on this court with these kids. Today, Coach K is getting the team ready to play an early season game against the University of Dayton. It will be a key test in their new season. Dayton is the best team so far in the schedule and a reality test for Coach K to see how good his new players are and to judge how much his returning players have grown. This is the start. We know who we are and we know who we want to become. Let's become who we want to become. It's also six weeks to what's considered a sacred basketball ritual, the annual showdown between Duke and its arch rival. Ready. A scant eight One, miles two, away in Chapel three, Hill four, is the University five, of North Carolina. Seven, UNC's fabled basketball program produced the likes of Michael Jordan and Vince Carter and three of its own national championships. We've had amazing games in the history of the two programs, and it's a storied game. You're either a Duke fan or you're a Carolina fan. There's no waffling or wavering in between. It is the one rivalry all other rivalries, I think, secretly wish they could be. People talk about it for the next year until the next game happens. You know, who won the last game between Duke and UNC? Who wants blue hair? If you ever had a chance to view a Duke North Carolina basketball game, it'd be something you'd be talking about for the rest of your life. It's a benchmark game every year in college basketball, and for 23 years, Mike Krzyzewski has been in the middle of it. National rankings are at stake. Top players make legendary shots. And the basketball crazy corridor known as Tobacco Road talks about little else. The Duke-UNC rivalry remains one of sports finest and most hard fought. That showdown is six weeks away. 
But even as Duke practices now for the game with Dayton, outside in the bitter cold of winter, a phenomenon around the Duke-UNC rivalry begins. Today is the 20th of December. I set up my tent kind of early for the February 5th UNC game. For six weeks, this area transforms into a tent city, simply known as Krzyzewskiville, after the coach they all admire. Coach K's got at this campus. One game, uh, somebody had thrown something on the court. The referee went to the mic and said something, and like nobody listened. The air horn went off like right when he said it. And then Coach K walks over to the mic, and it's like a father's holding his children. Coach K leans in the mic, he goes, excuse me, that will not happen again. And at this point, everyone's just like, our, our bad, K, our bad. <laughs> But he wasn't always considered infallible. You really can't become a coach unless you learn the game from the ground up. Mike Krzyzewski began his spectacular rise to the top as an unspectacular player who compensated with plenty of grit. He played under the watchful eye of a legendary coach at West Point. More than any kid that I've ever coached, Mike understood what he was going to have to do to play. Knight hired his former player as an assistant at Indiana and then helped him get his first head coaching job at West Point. I learned about preparation, first of all, to a degree that, I, I mean, I didn't know that the game could be prepared for in that exquisite manner. After five seasons at West Point, Krzyzewski was named head coach at Duke University. But early on, after two losing seasons in a row, there was talk of firing him. When he finally started winning in the mid-1980s, he was only able to take the team so far. People were talking about him as maybe the coach who just couldn't get over that hump. In 1990, Duke made it to the championship game, the NC2A finals, and lost. The next year, however, was different. Duke has won his first national championship. And that's the first smile I've seen on Mike Krzyzewski's face in a long time. He finally won the big one. The doubters were silenced. But Coach K didn't rest. Only three coaches have ever won two straight championships, and he was in position to do that the next year. Being satisfied is one of the worst things that can happen to a coach. You've just won a really good game. Well. There's another game. I mean, damn, let's go win it. To get to the Final Four the next year, Duke had to defeat a powerful team from the University of Kentucky. Duke is about to lose the game in overtime when Kentucky makes this shot with just two seconds to play. Is this the end for Duke? As Kentucky celebrates what they think is a dramatic victory, Coach K tells his star player what he has to do. During the timeout, he said, we're going to win this game. Grant, you're going to make a good pass to Christian. Christian, you're going to get a good shot up. Desperate pass to Christian Leitner. He shoots. Good! It was a defining moment. Mike Krzyzewski showed the world what could happen when you know your players and have confidence in them. It was a, a, an unbelievable game where kids made great plays. That year, Duke goes on to win the national championship, making Coach K only the second coach ever to win back-to-back -back titles. But that was then. Ten years later, it's a different story. This year, Duke may not have a national championship caliber team. For one thing, it's a very young team, full of freshmen who present a coaching challenge of another kind for Mike Krzyzewski. I am, and I, I hope I always will be, someone who concentrates on next play. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think you can live in the past. We have an adjustment to make when you have six freshmen, so they're still you know, slightly behind with regards to what we want in our fundamentals. Inspired by his military training at West Point, Coach K teaches a system he calls the fist. If you're going to battle someone, you're not going to throw a punch with five individual fingers. And the fist just pertains to basketball because it happens to be five guys on the floor. So but what we're saying is if we can get five guys to come together with, with each finger representing one of the guys out on the floor, then you create a rock-solid fist. 
So now when you go to fight somebody, when you do throw that punch, it's a heck of a lot stronger than it would be if it was five individual fingers. The training for that battle takes place in Coach K's rigorous behind closed door practices. Here we go, let's go. We are a team game. You know, we are a group that if it function as one, with less talent, it can beat a team that has more talent but does not function as one. This can't be the last play. So you're coming over like that, and you can't make a play after that. You got to come over here, and then come back here, here, here. You got to go back and forth. If you can get a group of people to connect on an offensive or defensive play, and if they're really good and passionate about what they're doing, it's an amazing thing. And I love that. That's good. This year, Coach K needs to fashion his fist with the help of a junior, team captain Chris Duhon. He will not score the most points on this team or grab the most rebounds, but he is the key player to make the fist on the floor. So far this season, with Duhon leading the way, Duke has cruised to wins in their first six games. To stay on course, Duhan must help his teammates stay focused as their season gets tougher. What you have to do is, on a day-to-day -day basis, create an environment of competition, of intensity, of hard work, making each other better. For Coach K, the challenge will be to make one of his youngest teams ever equal to the pressure of the biggest games in college basketball and ready to go head-to-head -head with their most important rival. As Duke practices for their game against Dayton, Coach K knows that this will be a contest that will pit a veteran team against a Duke team that's still learning to play together. It's a team sport. If you spend your time making other people better, you just become better basketball player. With some of the kids that we have, the younger kids in their high schools, they were the player. So they really haven't learned to do that. It's not like they can't do it, but they haven't learned to do it because everything kind of was centered around them. Coach K used to have the luxury of bringing his freshmen along slowly. His basketball program was one of the last affected by the big money lure of pro basketball. But eventually, the prospect of millions proved too much for his college players to resist. In 1999, two star players, Elton Brand and Corey Maggette, stunned the Duke basketball world by leaving before their senior years. He told me, you know, I, I don't think you should go, I don't think you're ready, but hey, it's a man decision, so you have to be able to take the decision with you. Some of these guys went ignoring his advice that they not go. It was very hard for him to, to conceal his disappointment. Basketball is fleeting. But what are you going to do when you're 35, 40? We want to make sure these young people are prepared for life, you know, well beyond the air going out to basketball. One player who stuck around that year was Shane Battier, a team leader and All-American. Coach doesn't complain uh, about the state of the game. He looks at his cards in his hands and says, OK, I'm going to play the, the hand that's dealt. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win with this hand. Then disaster struck in mid-season when a key player broke his leg. Coach K turned adversity into opportunity, and that's what he offered his undermanned team. We could easily fold it, uh, but Coach came back as confident as I've ever seen him before and said, if you follow this plan, we'll win the national championship. When we started to make our run for the title, uh, he would ask us, is, is everyone ready to jump on the train? And, and if you're not, then get off and we'll go do it without you. Coach K's train went full steam ahead. In what many call his greatest coaching job ever, Duke's depleted team made it to the national championship game in the year 2001, giving him a shot at a third national championship. That night, Coach K's train arrived again. Duke has won, and Mike Krzyzewski now has three national championships for the Blue Devils. It is my privilege and honor to present the men's championship trophy to coach Mike Krzyzewski in the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah, 
Chris Duhon was a freshman then. Now, two years later, and having become one of the veterans on the Duke team, Duhon's trying to fill Battier's shoes as team captain, a position hand-picked by Coach K. I have to be uh, solid as a rock. I mean, I can't have, you know, any emotional problems. I can't go through mood swings. I just have to be there for them. I and mean, when those guys look at my face, they need to see confidence and a guy that, you know, will do whatever it takes for the team to be successful. On hand to watch Chris's progress is his mother, Vivian Harper. Chris Duhon, Vivian Harper. Thank you. I have my ticket. When Chris came to Duke from Louisiana, Vivian did too. He said, Mama, you know, you've got to come all the way. I can't do this without you. So it was, he didn't have to ask twice. She just, you know, couldn't let her little baby go, I guess. But now, Vivian's son has to lead a legendary basketball program against some of the most ferocious competition in the country. <laughs> you want to pick it back off? <laughs> some people judge him, you know, and say that he perhaps, you know, skill-wise, perhaps he's ready. Um, I worry more about his mental or his emotional stability. One of Duhon's freshman teammates is Shavlik Randolph. An All-American high school star, Randolph was heavily recruited for college. I knew that he would be taking care of our son and teaching him to grow up to be a man, not just for the next game, not just for four years in college, but for what's down the road in life. Coach K takes boys and turns them into men. Even a high school All-American can be a challenge for Coach K. And Randolph, like most of the freshmen on the team, has been inconsistent. It's such a faster-paced game. Everyone is bigger, everyone is stronger, everyone is, you know, better. You know, we got to remember this time last year, these players were playing uh, in front of 300 people in high school. Here. At tonight's game against Dayton, the Duke team is going to play at Cameron Indoor, which fills for every game with a capacity crowd. During its first six victories this year, Duke rarely displayed the full 40 minutes of consistent play that Coach K expects. And Dayton is an adversary that is more determined and seasoned than any team Duke has faced so far. As a former player, Kevin Strickland has insights into Coach K during games. It's going to be a very competitive game. Dayton is a very good team, and, uh, and I'm sure you know Coach K has prepared them the way that he always does. Despite Dayton's experience, Duke takes early control of the game. Forcing five turnovers in the first five minutes and shooting well from the field. By halftime, Duke holds a 17 point lead and seems to be in command. In spite of their lead, Kevin believes that right now in the locker room, Coach K is not happy. I was looking here, they have, uh, you know, 10 turnovers, and that's, that's way too many for a Duke team. As the second half begins, Dayton chips away at the score. Duhon is having a difficult time guiding his team. His undefeated season teetering, Coach K is fuming. It's an important moment in the game for both the players and the coach. A lot of times, he'll just let them play their way through it when they're going through all this adversity right now, turning the ball over, missing shots. But Duhan and Duke continue to struggle. Dayton eventually coming within seven points with just over two minutes left in the game. Chris! 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 Chris. A young team like this could be very fragile, so he has to be very careful as to how he uh, reacts. They're playing hard, they're just not playing smart. With just under two minutes to go, Chris Duhon steals the ball and finishes with a two-handed dunk. A now energized Duhon and his teammates go on to win their seventh straight victory of the season.
But for Coach K, it's a win that illustrates the weaknesses of his team. We had a hard time stopping them in the second half because we got in foul trouble and tired. You'll never hear me say, well, you know, it was a W. It's like one of the worst things you could say because what you're telling your team with that is, well, that was okay. You performed that way. At least we, at least we won. That was good. Oh, we just wanted to say, hey. It's the kind of night that team leader Chris Duhon can smile about now that it's over. All right. Now, with the heart of the season approaching, Coach K's young team has taken one small step toward realizing its potential. But much bigger challenges await, ones that will not only put these players to the test, but also one of the greatest coaches in the game. After their early season victory against Dayton, the roller coaster ride Duke basketball coach Mike Krzyzewski has been dreading kicks in. First, their string of early season victories launches his young team to the number one ranking in the country. But they don't stay there for long. Two bitter losses against conference rivals Maryland and North Carolina State eat away at both the national rankings and the player's confidence. And with just one more game before the annual showdown with North Carolina, what was once seen as a tune-up against a weak Florida State team is now nothing less than a must win. Outside the gym, Tent City has grown, now housing over a thousand die-hard student fans. And inside the gym, it's a time when Krzyzewski must be more than just a coach to his players. With six freshmen, who they are one week can change dramatically the next week. This year's team, I've spent much more time, not just in teaching, but in talking to them, getting to know them. Because something that would keep them back on the court may be something that's happening off the court. You know, where are you at right now? We spend a lot of time talking as a staff about relationships with the players. Where is this kid right now? Much of the weight of the team's performance falls on the shoulders of captain Chris Duhon. We just have to keep getting better and keep getting better to become the team that we want to become. Good, good. Right there, Chris. Good, good. We know that every game from here on out is going to be a challenge. That's the reason why we came to do. So we, we just got to be excited. We have to become a better team and uh, just play sharp and do the things that we need to do to become successful. As Duke travels to Florida State, they are favored to win. But the game will be played in a hostile atmosphere, perfectly designed to rattle young players. When you're a freshman and you go away, it's so different from anything they've ever experienced at the high school level. As expected, the Florida State fans try to distract Duke's players the moment they enter the arena. There is some fear there when you walk out on the opponent's court. That's typical of most freshmen, but hopefully we're far enough along in the season where at some point that'll change and we can play as well on the road as we have played at home. And early on, Duke falls way behind. Their confidence shaken, they are unable to prevent Florida State from taking control of the game. Even Chris Duhon, who tries to be everywhere on the court, can't rally his teammates. At the end of the first half, Florida State leads Duke by six. This is not what Coach K expected. But as he takes his team to the locker room, he knows the game is still within reach. His only hope is that in the quiet of halftime, he can inspire them now to find a way to win. If you're having a bad game, Coach K, you know, might curse at you a little bit and yell at you a little bit, let you know, to snap out of the funk that you're in. I've been around a lot of coaches who won't do that. And sometimes you need a, a swift kick in the rear end to start playing the right way. And one of the great things about Coach K is he's not afraid to do that to anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. 
In this case, it's his team captain. As the game resumes, Chris Duhon is benched after the first few minutes. It's a psychological ploy by Coach K to push his team captain, trying to get him back on track so he can lead his teammates. When Duhon comes back on the floor, he tries to do just that. But Duke never regains the lead. With 10 seconds left, they only trail by three. A three-pointer would send the game into overtime. Duhan brings the ball up court, but slips and falls, losing the ball out of bounds, ending Duke's chances to win. The team's tailspin continues, and Florida State's fans storm the floor to celebrate their major upset. How Coach K handles this loss could make or break his team's season, especially with the game with arch rival North Carolina next. But after the game, the atmosphere in the Duke locker room is still positive. We walked into the locker room and Coach didn't do any yelling. And it wasn't a moment for throwing anything or yelling or uh, being vilified. It was a moment for, OK, guys, here's where we are and here's where we need to go. And if we do those things, we can be really good. If we don't do those things, we're going to have locker rooms like this uh, some more times. At the post-game press conference, there's a pointed question about Chris Duhon being on the bench at the start of the second half. Mike, what about uh, Chris and early in the second half? Because he sat for a while. I was wondering what you were trying to say to him. Or... No, I'm not trying to say anything. We weren't playing well. You know, we messed up on the first two exchanges of the half. Coach, what are you going to do now to prepare the team for North Carolina? What we do for, you know, next play. You know, next play. I mean, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have time to look back and, and worry about whether you win or lose. You've got to get ready for the next thing. So uh, we've got to play better. Just got to keep playing better. Okay, thank you. All right. Chris Duhon is also feeling the pressure. <laughs> oh, we have to just... You know, regroup. Uh, we have a tough one here, and uh, we just got to get better in uh, certain areas, and uh, you know, focus on them. They're a very good team. Uh, we're playing them at home, so that's a plus for us. So uh, we just have to put this game behind us and move uh, on. Little does he know that Coach K is about to make a move that will stun the Duke basketball community. While the team heads home under a cloud. Back at Duke, outside their home court, students continue their elvy chilly winter nights. There is tension and tense. Set up in late December in order to ensure seats for the game against North Carolina, a game now just three days away. And after this latest loss, that game is more important than ever for Coach K and his team. The game that die-hard college basketball fans look forward to every year is now only a day away. At Duke, the countdown is on. And Tent City is now the center of campus life. I can remember I couldn't sleep before the game my freshman year, and I think you're just so whether it's nervous energy or excitement, it's just you're really ready, you're ready to roll, and you can't believe that you're going to get to put on a Duke jersey and you get to go into this infamous, you know, Duke Carolina game. Eight miles down the road at UNC, fans are just as passionate as the showdown approaches. Four, five. Cameron is a hard place to play in, and I know it's going to be loud, but. Carolina fans will be there. We'll be supporting them at home. If we don't beat anyone all year, we want to beat Duke. We can't stand Duke. We want to be better than Duke in everything we do, and I think that it comes through, especially uh, during basketball, but I think it's present all year long. Because this is not just any game, both coaches hold rare pregame press conferences. I don't want to do this like a regular press conference. It's a, a chat with friends. Uh, <laughs> Is there a little bit more to it because it is Duke? Yeah. Uh, don't have many 
press conferences like this before other games. There is a lot of interest, eight miles away, two-storied programs, uh, a lot of championships between the two teams. So it is different. We all recognize that and acknowledge it and, and uh, enjoy it. As expected, one of the first questions for Coach K concerns team captain Chris Duhon's performance during the recent loss to Florida State. Mike, is Chris anything technically wrong with his shot? Is he taking good shots, you think? What's, what's well, I, I, you know, he hasn't played well. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no question about that. And we're all responsible. You know, when I talk about a kid's individual play, we're responsible for, I mean, he, me, you know, the kid's never out there alone. That night, the eve before the game, the campus media camp out in Krzyzewskiville. Keep it wild tonight. <laughs> this is actually um, pizza being delivered to our tent. We have to be here all night and uh, due to starvation and um, empty stomachs, we need to eat. Consumption of alcohol on an empty stomach is not good. This will help with that. For those who spent these winter weeks camping out, it's considered a rite of passage. And it's worth doing it. Oh, oh yes. my God, it's, I mean, everyone does it to get into the game, but the experience itself is awesome too. It's a real fun time. I mean, just you're always out with your friends. If you like, I mean, if you're tenting with 12 of your best friends, then there's nothing better. For the players, the wild scene on campus adds to the pressure. It's something you dream about growing up as a kid, you know, participating in the, in the Duke UNC rivalry. And uh, to have my first opportunity this year, I'm just so excited about it. I'm looking forward to playing it because I've, uh, I've watched it so much from a viewer standpoint, watching it on TV, I'm definitely looking forward to participating in it. We say it's just another game, but really it's, it's our most important game. You know, people talk about it for the next year until the next game happens. You know, who won the last game between Duke and UNC? Cameron Indoor Stadium. Coach K calls the Cameron Crazies his sixth man and realizes how much their enthusiasm contributes to Duke's successful record on their home court. As a player, you're always aware of the crowd. They're a big advantage for us. They really go after the other team with their chance. I mean, they get crazy. That's why they're the camera crazies. And it's just such a big advantage for us to go out and have the other team hounded by our fans. And they really pick us up, too. So every year on the eve of the Carolina game, he invites all of the students camped Thanks out in Krzyzewskiville into Cameron. It's closed to the media, right. but head-to-head -head camera crews are allowed in for the first time. I want to let you know a little bit about our team, OK? And things that I'll share with you tonight, uh, I really haven't shared with anybody except the team, you know, my family, certainly not the press. And As is his style, Coach K wants to forge a connection with the fans, just as he does with his players. You can have more impact on our team this year than in any other year. This team needs you more than any team at a time when a lot of people just think it's an assembly line of doing this. It's never that. It's always a process of becoming. I want you to be part of that process. It's about us doing this together. The Chris Duhon situation is weighing heavily on Coach K's mind. Uh, I think it's been tough for him. You know, I think it's affected his game a, a little bit. It's, it's a tougher leadership position to be in. He's becoming that leader, but he needs to have the help of me and, and the other people in doing it. But I think in having that burden, it's affected some of his performance. I know that Chris is capable of playing better, and we're hoping that that comes soon. Give him a lot of support. Give Duhon a lot of support. After the meeting, the students head back to Tent City for the night. Coach K steals a quiet moment to study game film in the solitude of his office. You know, for me, some of this is uh, ritualistic. Like you pay homage to the game or through your preparation, and there's an investment that you're making in it. And then when the game's actually there, you're you know, you've kind of prepared the right way. It's, it's a little bit of a ritual. It's also a time to think. 
and strategize how best to help Duhan and his team win this important game. But it's the same way he prepares for every game. If I prepare for North Carolina differently than I prepare for Army, uh, Florida State, Dayton, or anybody else, then I'm a fraud. I have to prepare the same way for everybody, so when you do get the games that people say are supposed to be big, you already have championship habits. It's not a big game because of whom we are playing. It's a big game because we're playing it. Even so, in a few hours, the attention of the entire basketball world will weigh heavily on both his shoulders and those of his young players. It's game day. Blue hair, who wants blue hair? For the die-hard fans, the day they've been waiting for has finally arrived. The Cameron Crazies get ready. Never been this cold, but it doesn't matter. Does anybody care if you're cold right now? The students will do everything possible to make their home court a nightmare for Carolina's team. They need us. We're here for them. They want us screaming. Got to get into the other team's head. I'm going to mohawk my hair. I've been growing it Once since the down. fall to Mohawk for Carolina. Chris Duhon gets a hero's welcome as he heads for the arena. An hour before game time, the doors open to the Cameron Crazies. While the teams warm up, the Crazies begin their antics, and no one is safe. When you see those jerseys, man, and you see the name on the front of that jersey, Duke in North Carolina, that means pride, that means enthusiasm and energy. But not too much energy. Coach K has been through countless big games, and now he wants to keep his players on an even keel for this one. With a young team, you can end up using a lot of emotional energy before you ever play the game. It's game time. Duke's basketball team enters the arena, followed by their coach. There he is. He's focused. You can see it on his face. He's, it's all business from here on out. He's got to lead this team, and you, you, you ride his back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tonight's starting lineup for the University of North Carolina. As the Duke starting lineup is introduced, the crowd and the nationwide media are stunned to see that Captain Chris Duhon is being left on the bench. But no matter how disappointed he feels, Duhon can't let it show. Players, look at Chris. Yeah, not starting tonight. He's up, he's helping his team. That's what they need from him. You know, that's the Duke team and the Duke attitude that Coach K is trying to instill in all these guys. For the first five minutes of the game, Duke can't find a rhythm. Down low, throws it away intended for Sanders. It is a second Duke turnover. And they trail UNC. Drops it off to Noel. His jumper from the right corner, good for three. Tay Jones, ball knocked away, caught by Noel. Drops it off to William. Proud the jump shot is good. Mike Krzyzewski searches for a lineup that will stop some of those Carolina offensive fireworks. The crowd becomes subdued, just what Coach K doesn't want to happen. It's a key moment, and Coach K decides to put Chris Duhon in the game. One of Coach K's messages to his players is that defense creates offense. And it's clear tonight that Duhan has paid attention. Randolph backpedaling on defense now. And the attempted steal by Duhan. You can see his defense is 100 times better than he's played all year. He's talking, he's communicating. He's about to take control of this game. And he does. You know, what a great play by Chris. That's his second steal. You can see Coach get up right after Chris makes that play. That's what he's been asking Chris to do this whole season. Now with a chance to grab the lead. 9-7 the score. Carolina by two. Duhon down inside to Sanders. Got the block right side. Takes it into traffic. Puts up the shot. No good. No down left side. Drop pass away to Gerard Williams. Right. it knocked down on the play. Loose basketball. Outlet. He's got to get rid of it. The ball is knocked away and recovered by Sanders. 
Duhon helps keep Duke close. But they can't seem to close the gap with UNC, and they still trail by five at the end of the first half. Now, Mike Krzyzewski will have to coax a winning performance out of his freshman and his shaky captain. A loss will be devastating to the season. A win will turn it around. It's pressure time for Coach K as he goes head to head with a determined rival. Mike Krzyzewski, his Duke basketball team, and the thousands of diehard Cameron crazies are teetering on the edge of a sports disaster. Losing to the University of North Carolina at home could ruin the season. Their arch rival has been in control of the game and still leads by five as the second half begins. This is where Duke takes it from being boys to being men. That's especially true for Duhon. He did not start tonight's big game and did not score a single point in the first half. That has to change for Duke to have a chance to win. And right away in the second half, Duhan shows he's ready. Moments later, he ties the game. Here goes Duhan down the lane. His quarter's gone. Score time, 45. Duhan, second field goal of the half. But North Carolina is not about to quit. Duhan rushed him off with a center screen, drives, tried to protect it with his body and did. And, and retakes the lead. Takes in the lane, bounces to Noel, left open on the right side for the three. Only to see Chris Duhan tie the game again. Hits weak side to Duhan. Here's a long with big play after big play, Duhon and senior Dante Jones take control of the game for Duke. And once Duke takes the lead, their confidence soars and they begin to pour it on. They finally found the heart Coach K has been looking for all year and it couldn't have come at a better time. There's been so much talk over the last couple of days about Duke veterans, Chris Duhon, Dante, these guys stepping up. Rebounded by Jones. Away to Duhon. Duhon especially seems to have taken his game to a whole new level. He hits from outside. The middle, gets a ball screen. Here's the jumper, top of the circle. Goes. And drives aggressively inside. Top on the drive, left side. Scoops it up, goes. The veterans tonight have really stepped up, and that's got to please coach. After a lackluster first half, Duhon has finally given the crazies plenty to cheer about. His spectacular second half play has led Duke to a nine point lead. Coach K, aware of how tough Duhon's recent struggles have been, now gives him the ultimate compliment. With the game well in hand, he takes him out so the fans can give him his due. As the buzzer sounds, the Cameron Crazies storm victoriously back to Krzyzewskiville, which will now close down till next year's game. But as the dramatic turnaround in the game sinks in, it is already fast becoming one of those moments to add to Coach K's legacy. Well, obviously it was a great, great basketball game. It was an honor to be in this game, one of the better ones I've been in in the last couple of years because of both teams playing so hard. And the coach has special praise for Chris Duhon, the team captain he left on the bench at the tip-off, hoping he'd come back into the game with renewed purpose. Obviously, Chris was, was great. I mean, he, he was such a good leader tonight in setting things up, communication with the bench, it, by far his best game. Even Chris Duhon has to marvel at how well Coach K orchestrated his success knowing that letting him ride the bench would motivate him to play the game of his life and emerge as the latest Duke hero.
It was amazing. I mean, I talked to him before the game, and uh, you know, we shared that same moment then. He told me that I was going to have a great game. He has never lied to me, and uh, when I played my butt off, and you know, that that moment was special. I knew at halftime Coach K was going to get them together. I think he was just putting too much pressure on himself, and I think he just learned to relax and just let the game come to him instead of chap uh, stop trying to force things. In a year with a young team. Duke's comeback victory over North Carolina stands as a defining moment, a time when Coach K's players saw what was possible and helped define a coach's greatness. Coach K is great at keeping everyone together and making us realize that chemistry is important and feeling like a family and believing in each other. I think Coach K's biggest strength is the ability to, to find what it is on each individual person to motivate them to play to their potential. You know, he's so driven that he, he instills that upon us. You know, I know I wanted to, you know, go fight and win every game, not only for myself and for my team, but also for Coach. And I think that's why he's so successful. He's just a great leader. I would have ran through a brick wall for him. A big win, but not the end of the season. It's never about one game for Mike Krzyzewski. And the one who knows him best, his wife, sees that as clearly as her husband. It's not a job. It's, it's a complete lifestyle. And there's never a time that we're not thinking about the guys on the team. I always talk about how I'm going to write a book one day. And the name of the book is The Season Never Ends. <laughs> and that's the truth. The season never ends. Three national championships, 11-time coach of the year, well over 500 career victories. But the stats only tell part of the picture. What makes Coach K so unique is that his teams and his players are about more than numbers. They're about building something that lasts beyond the final shot, the last whistle, the end of the season. We want everyone to feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. And if we can accomplish that, we're gonna do really well we may not win the whole thing every time, but we're gonna do really well all the time. At its most basic level, basketball remains a game with a ball, 10 players, and two baskets. But in the hands of a master like Coach Mike Krzyzewski, it becomes the most elegant of creations, transcending sports. It's how to get people working together for a common goal, to see what heights they can reach. Later that year, when Duke visited North Carolina, emotions ran high when the two coaching staffs got into a shouting match. Uh-oh, we got a, a near fight here in front of the Duke the bench. Pass down to the camps. He drives, scores on the layup. Carolina won that game by three points. So, the officials are still on the floor. But a week later, Coach K and Duke got their revenge by beating both North Carolina and North Carolina State on their way to winning the championship tournament of the tough Atlantic Coast Conference. their record-breaking fifth straight conference title. When Duke's season ended with a strong run in the NC2A tournament, Coach K said his team played like champions. Their final record, 26 and seven. Some say it was one of Coach Mike Krzyzewski's finest seasons.